Good morning everyone! Our topic for today is all about Lesson 8, which is Inductive Learning. In our contemporary society, teachers are dis discouraged to spoon-feed information to the learners. Instead, teachers are encouraged to provide opportunities for the students to discover concepts on their own. One way of doing this is through the inductive learning strategy. The inductive learning strategy, sometimes called discovery learning, is based on the principle of induction. Induction means to derive a concept by showing that if it is true to some cases, then it is true for all. This is in contrast to deduction where a concept is established by logically proving that it is true based on generally known facts. The inductive method in teaching is commonly described as specific to general concrete to abstract or examples to formula, whereas the vice versa is used to describe the deductive method. In an inductive learning lesson, the teachers design and facilitate activities that guide the learners in discovering a rule. Activities may involve comparing and contrasting, grouping and labeling, or finding patterns. In mathematics classes, the learners engage in inductive learning when they observe examples and then late, later on generalize a rule or formula based on the examples. There are four processes that the students go through when given an inductive learning activity. First is observe. Second is hypothesis or hypothesize. Third, collect evidence. And last, the number four is generalize and today let us discuss the first process of inductive learning it is to observe we all know that children love looking for patterns when given many examples it is natural for them to look for similarities and assume rules so the K is to give them examples to observe these examples must be well thought of so that the students would eventually arrive at a complete rule for instance if you want your students to discover the rule in multiplying decimal numbers, it is better to use the examples in set B than those in set A, so that the students' observations would focus on the placement of the decimal point. And here's the example. In set A, there is 0 0.6 times 2 equals 1.2. And next, 1.8 times 0 0.3 equals 0 0.54. And last, 0 0.21 times 1.4 equals 0 0.294. And we all know that it is better to use examples in set B than those in set A. Then, look for the similarities in differences. 
we all know that set B is more easy than set A. 6 times 2 equals 12. And 0 0.6 times 2 equals 1.2. And last, 0 0.6 times 0 0.2 equals 0 0.12. And now, let us now move to the next or second process, which is hypothesis. The students form rules in their minds as they observe. In this stage, encourage the students to share their thoughts. Assure them that there are no wrong hypotheses. Acknowledge the variety of the students' ideas, but also streamline them too. Later on, test only the unique hypothesis. In our example, the hypothesis place the decimal point according to the number places of the factors. Maybe considered the same as from the whole number product, move the decimal point to the left according to the number of decimal places of the factors. And, and the next or the third process, which is to collect evidence. Here, the students test their hypothesis by applying their hypothesis to other examples. If there is more than one hypothesis generated by the class, intentionally give a counterexample or counterexample for them to test. So, the next process or the fourth process, which is the generalized, will be discussed by my partner or with my partner, Jacob Merham. So in generalized, finally the student will now uh, formalize uh, their hypothesis to a rule. Support the student so that they would, uh, would use mathematical terms in stating the rule. For example, instead of saying the number of a digital uh, the number of the digital to the right of the decimal points. So, lead, uh, in that, lead the student to say the number of uh, decimal place. Doing this will develop the student mathematical vocabulary and therefore their overall mathematical communication skills. So now we will proceed in applying the different techniques. So the student to solve the following using any of the techniques that their classmates shared in dividing a whole number by a fraction. So example of this number. Other example may be given but consider that one of the possible solution is illustration. So go use a small values. Also include example of dividing by a unit's fraction. It will be useful in the discussion. If time is limited, group the student into five. And, and each group will answer one of the examples. Each technique discussed must be used by the, uh, by the student or one group. Move around while the students are work, working. Make sure to clarify confusion and correct uh, misconception about the techniques. If there are an any, because the class or the student discussion that will follow will be focused on the discussion of a rule. Yeah. So now let's observe. Write the example with an answer on the board, including the first one. So now ask the student about the experience as they solve. Lead them to realize that their technique are creative ways of solving the problem. But they are not the efficient. They should motivate them to discover a shortcut. Give some time for the student to observe the example. 
the first learner may become too excited to share their hypothesis but don't allow to them. The goal is for all the students to have the aha moment. So now let's proceed to the hypothesis. The struggling student may not see the pattern right away. So help them by uh, focusing their attention on the unit fraction division first. Call some student to explain their hypothesis. After each explanation, ask who has the same hypothesis. So now let's proceed to collect the evidence. Apply the hypothesis is example to see if they always work. Some of the student may have hypothesis that is multiplying by the denominator and dividing by the numerator will give the equation. Other may have, uh, others may have thought of dividing first in this stage. The student will realize that both will. So in generalize, based on the result of the collected evidence, ask the student which hypothesis is true for all. And instruct the student to write using their own words, the rules in their notebooks, uh, have two to three students read aloud what they have written. Most of the student work multiply by the denominator, then divide by the numerator. Lend discussion to the uh, realization that multiply uh, that multiplying by the denominator, then dividing by the numerator, is the same as multiplying by the fraction. Uh, Reciprocal, once this has been established, ask the student to rewrite their rule though so uh, to rewrite their rule to use them term reciprocal. And that's all for our topic and I hope you enjoy and gain some learnings. Again, my name is Michelle Oladjo and my partner, Akub Merham. Thank you.